All right, girls, I have heard you loud and clear. My texts have been uh, ringing in uh, constantly, and I have heard your need to be connected. And that's what we're trying to do today as we um, approach uh, this time and, and provide a lesson, our Sunday School lesson for you. Uh, I, I'm just really blessed to be a part of a church that uh, seek solutions in, in the midst of troubling times, uncertain times. And in this day, when we're looking for ways to connect with people because of social distancing, um, our church, I want you to know, is stepping up to the plate. And I want to thank uh, John and Matthew and Kirk for using their expertise so that we, don't, so that we can join together in Bible, school, uh, Bible study this week. And y'all need to thank them for having a lot of patience with me. Um, my days are running together uh, as I have been all about doing my part to flatten the curve of this virus. Uh, with that said, we are looking at session four this week, which is about faith. Yes, it's true that we skipped last week's lesson on salvation, but then when I got to thinking about it, did we really skip that lesson? Uh, I love how the plans of the Lord are so much bigger than my plans. And um, John Jones did salvation last week in this class. And I can't think of a better uh, lesson on salvation than the one he brought. Uh, he reminded us of our calling to share the salvation of Jesus Christ with people, and then he gave us practical steps to do just that. So this week, we are on faith. Please study session five. Our word for next uh, week is sanctified. Uh, so today, we're going to look at faith, and um, if you will, just uh, let's offer up a word to our Lord Jesus Christ as we begin. Father God, I just thank you that you give solutions when there seems to be uh, no solutions, Father. And none of this has caught you off guard. And when people bring together their gifts, Father, and giftedness, um, you, you answer. And so, Father God, we thank you that we actually have this time to study your word together this week. And I'm just asking that as we look at your word, that you speak to each one of us at the point of our deepest need for this lesson and what you're saying to us. Trouble us, encourage us, convict us, transform us, Father, by your word. And Father God, we just give you all honor, praise, and glory, because truly, indeed, you are sovereign. You are in control. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. So um, um, as we navigate, you know, when I was thinking about this lesson, I thought as we, we were trying to navigate today's culture, we really don't know what to believe because there is so much fake news, and that's a new word that we're getting used to, along with some others, such as social distancing and self-isolating, and, and the list goes on and on and on. But when this virus first came into the news, many people did not actually believe what we were being told, the news that was being delivered to us. Uh, they couldn't trust our media outlets because, frankly, uh, most of the media outlets news reports have their own political leanings. And so who can we trust during this time of uncertain days? And I believe that we lost valuable days in the treatment of this virus simply because people didn't believe what they were hearing and so they didn't act. And that's what this lesson is all about. It is about people who believed and then acted. So I want to read Hebrews 11, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, 1 through 6. Now faith is the confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. This is what the ancients were commended for. By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command so that what is seen was not made out of what was visible. By faith Abel brought God a better offering than Cain did. By faith, he was commended as righteous when God spoke well of his offerings. And by faith, Abel still speaks even though he's dead. 
By faith, Enoch was taken from this life so that he did not experience death. He could not be found because God had taken him away. For before he was taken, he was commended as one who, was ple who pleased God. And without faith, it is impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe that he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him. Girls, there have been many definitions of faith that, that, that I could propose to you today. But to me, faith in its simplest form is belief, period. It is believing God. And that belief leads to some actions on the part of the people that we read about in Hebrews 11, as well as on our part. We trust God. And so in Hebrews 11, we see individuals whose faith was grounded in something solid. Um, uh, a faithful God who could be fully trusted. Is this not relevant for where we are today? Yes, God can be trusted right now in our circumstances and whatever comes tomorrow uh, as a result of where we are. And I believe like never before that we have been positioned um, to share this with those um, who do not know our Lord. And so in verse 1, we are told that, that faith is confidence and it is assurance that that, that, is, what our, that is what faith is uh, that surrounds faith, confidence and assurance. And in some translations, that word confidence is substance. And that's really the word that I want you to hear this morning uh, or, or today is, is, is uh, faith is the confidence, faith is the assurance. Stop and think with me just a minute. Faith is a common, de common denominator of all of life. We have to exercise faith in uh, different ways as we go through our day. When we walk in, in this church building or when you walk in a building period, uh, you have faith in that architect and the builder that what they did is enough to hold this building up when you walk through it. When you walk down, when you drive your car down the road, you have to have faith that the car that is coming toward you stays in their lane. Also, when you sit down in a chair, you have to have faith that it's going to hold you up. But if you stop and think about it, in one respect or another, usually all of those things are going to let us down. Although we believe tremendously in all of those things. God says here in Hebrews 1, 11, 1, that faith is, is substance and it's assurance. And that is grounded in the Word of God, I believe. That word translated substance here is translated title deed. So what is the title deed? It's the Word of God. It's taking God at His Word and believing it. Faith, real faith has a firm foundation, and that foundation is based on God and His promises in His Word. When we get to verse 2, it says, By faith we understand that the universe was formed at God's command. Um, actually, I got, a, got ahead of myself. Verse 2 says, This is what the ancients were commended for. Um, the, the, the ancients are the people in the Old Testament times where we're going to learn about what their stories were all about. And they were commended for this. They believed God when they couldn't see God or when they did not have any evidence of what He was telling them to do. And so these Old Testament examples believed God, and for them it was not a leap of faith in, the, in darkness. It was not a, I hope so. Their faith, re their faith rested upon evidence. And that evidence was the Word of God, even though they didn't have the printed form like we have. And so our faith has to be anchored in something, and this something for us as believers is the Lord God. Then when we get to verse 3, I find it very interesting that we are told in Hebrews 11 that these... Uh, 
in these Hall of Famers, as we continue to read, we are included. Did y'all pick that up? By faith, we understand that the universe was formed by God's command. We had this list of the Hall of Famers of faith. Have you caught, have you ever caught that? Because this is so reassuring to me when I'm constantly having to ask God to forgive my sin of unbelief. If we can believe that the universe, the universe was formed at God's command, something that we didn't witness, nor can our minds even conceive what all and how he went in, how he went to, uh, how, uh, forming our, uh, the, the creation and this universe. If, if we can't conceive it and we weren't there, but we can believe it, that's faith. And, you know, uh, this is the oldest event that the Bible records as God's creation of the universe. And, I, and do, have you ever stopped to think about until day six of their, that week, no human was present to witness what all God had done. But because that word was passed on, people believed it. And here we are, how many generations removed, and we're still believing it through faith. So why can we not trust Him when we understand principles like that? And even now when we see Him working uh, over and over and over in His life, in our lives, to help us understand this. The writer of Hebrews turns his attention to the whole question of faith and then presents his readers with a significant sampling uh, of, of Old Testament people who believe God. And of the many faith people listed in Hebrews 11, the first two, Abel and Enoch, were very early in human history. Both died before their contemporaries, uh, and neither one's uh, earthly life ended before God assessed it. So, so their lives, many of them were gone before their contemporaries ever came on, on, the, on the path after them. And God assessed them for their faith. Now that's a sobering thought for me, that my faith is assessed by God. And I'm going to give an account of it. There's be, there is an account being written each and every day of our lives. So we look first in verse 4 at Abel's faith. And Abel's faith was all about Abel's offering. Scripture says here that he offered God or he brought God a better offering than Cain. So why was Abel's, Abel's offering better? What was the difference in these two boys of Adam and Eve? Because uh, their parents, Adam and Eve, if you stop and think about it, attempted to cover their nakedness or their sin up with uh, fig leaves. But immediately God set them straight and helped them to understand that their poorly de devised plan would never conceal the shame, their shame, in the presence of God. And so their man-made coverings was not a proper covering, and the only acceptable covering for their sin required a blood offering. And so we see God teaching them that at the very beginning, before their boys are even on the scene. And so we have to think that Adam and Eve passed this on to, their, to the, these boys because of the things that we read. Now, um, uh, the problem was, apparently Cain disobeyed whatever had been taught to him, which I believe was that there was only a blood offering uh, for the remission of sin. And I believe that because Adam and Eve had sinned and God showed them that there was a need of a blood offering, I think in turn they probably passed that on to the brothers. And so Cain disobeyed in his offering while Abel demonstrated his belief in what he had been told through his obedience of what he did. 
Both kinds of these offerings, both of these offerings were acceptable to God in the Old Testament uh, for specific acts of worship. But apparently, they were bringing a sin offering before God. And grain was not the acceptable offering for a sin offering. One scholar that I read uh, this week suggested that Cain's offering represented a faith by works. He had been out in the field. He gathered his grain offering, what he had been doing through his works, his efforts, and he brought it to the Lord because that's just what he did. Apparently, he had not obeyed what he was supposed to bring to God. I mean, that's not, not, that's not in the storyline, but because we have this picture of, of Cain and Abel through the Old Testament, we can begin to understand that. And, and, and so he, he labored and he brought God an offering based on his self-effort. So it represented works by man. And I think at this point, God was teaching a blood offering is the only acceptable offering to sin. So anyway, these brothers had inherited Adam and Eve's um, uh, sin nature. And they stood in need of God's forgiveness. And neither good intentions nor good works could make them right before God. Only faith can change a person's relationship with God. God. And I believe the writer is underscoring that what Abel did, his faith, his belief in what God had said translated through, was translated through his obedience. And so God commended Abel's faith as righteous. Abel knew he was a sinner and he knew that only a blood offering was acceptable. It was the only acceptable offering to God. So he, he, he obeyed even though he had no knowledge of the, of the cross. Do you understand that? He had not seen. He was walking in faith the unseen based on what he had been told. That is faith. Believing God and then translating that into our actions. And so we find at the end of verse 4 that by faith Abel still speaks even though he is dead. Wow, what a challenge to us today. I mean, have you stopped to, to, to transpose that and put, put your name in there? Do you want a faith that speaks long after you're gone? Then we get to verses 5 through 6, and we talk about Enoch's, uh, Enoch's experience um, uh, or Enoch's walk of faith. Uh, just to give you a little background, he was the father of Methuselah, who was the oldest person recorded in Scripture. And, the, and if you go back in Genesis, it says, when Enoch was 365 years old, he was no more. That's in Genesis 5, 24. God took him away. He simply went from walking with God on this earth to life in eternity walking with God. Do you understand that day by day we are doing the same thing? We are, going, we are walking with God on our life journey through this time of our life. And then one day... We're going to be transposed into eternity to walk with Him forevermore. What does your walk with God tell others around you? But before He was taken, Scripture says that He was commended as one who pleased God. The Scripture goes on to say uh, that uh, He is one that was commended uh, because he was he, he he pleased God, and so he that means he eternally he, he earnestly sought God in his walk every single day. So what do we glean about that kind of faith? Because I want to tell you, if you go back and look at history and and you put this in the historical context of Genesis, Enoch lived in a very dark 
uh, period preceding the flood. If you go back and you look at Genesis chapter 6, you see the description of man's sinfulness during that time. Uh, it was so bad that God judged the, the earth so harshly and only spared Adam and his family. That was how bad the society and the culture was at the time that Enoch walked. And so here was Enoch, and we're told that God commended his faith because he chose to walk a different path than the, the, the world around him. He chose to walk with God. He chose right living over worldly living. He chose obedience over disobedience. He chose belief over doubt. By faith, Enoch lived a consistent godly lifestyle that went totally against the current of the world. I mean, to walk with God means that you are in step with Him, that you are yielded in obedience to Him, that you are following His instruction, and there's no ifs, ands, or buts about it. So what is our takeaway? Let's imagine, because we're in the what people term as the hall of, of faith, the Hall of Famers of Faith. So let's just imagine that there's a hall, okay? I need you to picture this, that there's a great hall before us. One that has an exhibit like no other. There is display after display that you can enjoy as you walk along this hall. Before each display, there is an exhibit board. Because that's what we have if you continue to read Hebrews chapter 11. And each exhibit board details each display. And so, you know, I, so that is the picture, and that's what I want you to think about. And what is on display in each one of these people's lives is their faith, or it could be said their lack of faith. We see Abel. We walk up to his display and we see that he was commended because dot, dot, dot. Then we walk a little further and we see Enoch. And God, he, God was pleased with Enoch's faith because dot, dot, dot. That's on the display board. And then we see Abraham, Noah and then we see Abraham and Jacob and Moses. And on and on till we get to the last exhibit board in the great hall of famers of faith. And on the last exhibit board is the name you. Insert your name. Because each one of us is writing the story for our display board right now in our daily walk with Christ. So what does yours say? God wants us to trust Him, to take Him at His word. If Scripture says it, we need to be doing it. The people in the hall of, of faith were not people that knew all the whys or the hows or the wheres. These were imperfect people just like me and you. They just simply believed God at His Word. We're in the midst of a time where we don't have the hows, the wheres, and the whats, and the whys. So your faith is on display to all the people around you, especially the unbelievers who are so troubled and so anxious filled right now. And you're writing the story for your display board. These are people that just simply took God at His word, believed Him, and then translated that into actions. And Scripture helps us understand because they did this 
he counted their faith as righteousness. So your faith is on that display board right now in the middle of these uncertain days. What is displayed on your exhibit board for those around you who are watching and looking 